Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a <laughs> decently uh, Yeah, it's one of those days. Now, we're, what we're basically doing today is uh, nothing special. We're not uh, being a daredevil, we're not being crazy, we're not being assholes. What we're doing is riding to work. That's basically all that I'm currently going to do. I'm just going to ride myself to work because it may be winter, but I still got a job that I have to get to. Get the snow off the windshield. And yeah, a lot of people say you cannot ride in the winter because this and that and it's snowing. And well, you see, it's been snowing lightly all night. And uh, how's the surface? It's okay. Now, we're not in freezing temperatures. I mean, we're not in proper freezing temperature. Let's see, it's minus two degrees. So that's not bad. That's not proper freezing temperatures. Let me just set up the second camera so you can see me as I ride and hopefully I don't crash. But in case I do, I wanna see how dumb I am. There we go. Start it up. Now, the advantage of a little scooter is uh, if you want to clean your seat. Hmm. That went differently in my mind. Oh well. Come on. Thank you. And uh, on the other side. Now I'm still rocking the Michelins, so I don't have any sort of special winter tire. I still have the Michelin City Grips too, and uh, honestly, they should work just fine. They should be just fine for this. Let's get them fired up and let's get ready to ride. There goes Lila Dani. Now I know there's been quite a lot of. Bluetooth content on the channel, but uh, today we're gonna ride Liladani because like I've said Even though I have Brutus and I have been riding him around for about a month Well, this is still my main City runabout my scooter I basically rode Brutus around for a month because I really wanted to get to know that bike and uh, I'm gonna have a few videos explaining a few things about it and uh, Explain the difference between such a small little scooter and such a huge big adventure bike. Let's get the car though started so I can get some music going because Yeah, ever ever since uh, ever since I've got the car though, I'm I'm really gotten used to riding with music And it's just awesome Get the music nice and quiet so we don't get any copyright claims I don't I want to monetize this video anyway Always nice to have a trunk. Come on. Well, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see. How bad can it be? How dangerous is it? Oh, we're on snow. Whoa. <laughs> now, what I, what I do recommend when you wanna ride like an idiot like I am, as in in the winter time, watch out for these patches of snow where it's not wet because this may be slippery. Uh, don't make sudden movements. Use something very light like this little symphony and uh, it would be best if the thing was equipped with ABS. Because ABS can really, really save your ass in case of an emergency braking. So you don't lose the front. Oh, come on. I need to get to work. Thank you. Otherwise, if you follow simple tips and tricks like uh, watch the road. Don't be an idiot. Watch the road. Currently, I'm seeing it's just wet. There's no snow build up on it. 
uh, maintain distance from the car in front, uh, brake early, know your route, that's quite important, know your route. Like here, I know it's a roundabout and I may have to yield so I don't have to, I don't brake in the last second. I'm not saying go exploring in weather like this, although you could. There are people going up mountains on motorbikes in weather like this. But what I am saying is, uh, be smart about it. Yes, you can ride in weather like this, but be smart about it. Don't be an idiot about it. Now, what I am getting is no on the windscreen, and uh, that messes with visibility. But again, because I know the route, and I know, I don't know, potholes, intersections, just about everything. Whoa, nice Beamer. <laughs> I think that was a wrap, but that's a nice one. <laughs> like I was saying, because I know the route and I know the potholes and I know the intersections, uh, I really don't need to know to see the road all that perfectly. Basically, I do this route every single day getting to work, so it's no biggie for me. And I'm gonna be honest, Minus two degrees and snowing. The tarmac is perfectly fine. The scooter has ample amounts of grip. I'm not gonna start leaning too hard in the corners. Again, on uh, small streets like this that don't get a lot of traffic, watch out for, I don't know, snow on the side of the road because those parts can be slippery. Use your brain. Look, snow in the middle. And even if you see a patch of snow right in front of you and you can't make the maneuver to avoid it would be maybe too sudden for you to be comfortable. Uh, just hold the handlebar straight, hold the throttle steady and uh, just ride through it because if you ride straight, you're not gonna slip. Don't do sudden movements, just bloody ride through the thing and you're gonna be perfectly fine. Why is everybody so scared of riding in such weather? I, I'm just going to work. Ain't nothing bad about it. Now my rear tire is pretty worn. I think I have like 24,000 kilometers on it. Do I? Yeah, 8,000. 32 currently on the clock. Yeah, about 24,000 kilometers on my rear tire. So it is worn. So if I give it some ample gas, uh, leaving a stop sign or something, it is gonna feel a little bit squirmish. But again, I know my rear tire is worn, so I'm not gonna give it all that much gas. I'm not gonna put myself in a situation where I need to accelerate hard because I know I may not have the, the performance, the rear tire may not have the performance to give me what I need. So we're just gonna ride mildly. Now the problem with having such a big windscreen is this, you get snow buildup on it. <laughs> I still haven't figured out a way to mount a wiper on it, but it would be the most awesome thing to have a wiper. I did buy a ATV wiper on uh, AliExpress, but I didn't fit it because it's too big. It's bigger than the windscreen. I thought it would be a little bit smaller, but unfortunately it's bigger than the windscreen. So currently I'm still gonna have to do with uh, just wiping it with my hand every now and then, but ah, it is what it is. That's why such a big windshield is not actually all that great for touring, especially touring in uh, very bad weather. Because build up on your visor, it's easy to clean off. You just clean off your face a little bit. It's okay. And plus, because the visor is curved, uh, the wind usually blows water, rain, snow off the visor. So you're pretty much okay. But this being perfectly flat, mm, nothing blows off it so uh you get a lot of build up i saw that coming back from milan oh break it's the rosers quietly let's move quietly hopefully he doesn't see me now theoretically theoretically i'm not supposed to be riding on two wheels in this weather the law in Romania says if there's snow and ice on the road, 
uh, you are not allowed to ride the, a motorcycle. Well, I see it as there's snow and ice over there, and I'm riding over here. And those are tram lines. This is the road. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the road has no snow and ice on it. The tram lines do, but I'm not about to ride on the tram lines. Not now, anyway. Again, scanning the road surface for any sort of snow, ice, anything that looks weird. And once again, we can make some really, really decent time on our way to work because Bucharest traffic and the little scooter make perfect harmony. Uh, tight as an 18 year old but one, if you got the right size of machinery it's a breeze also again in terms of clothing honestly it's not that bad riding in these temperatures I mean I'm not riding all day I'm just riding to work and back, so it's like a 15-20 minute ride to work, so that's not a biggie. Now again, like scan the road surface. Look for the problem areas, look for snow. That was snow in the middle of the intersection, probably from somebody not cleaning the roof of their cars and stopping for pedestrians and snow just falling off their car. It's a common problem. People are lazy. They don't clean their cars of snow before leaving home. But anyway, like I was saying, you don't need uber extreme clothes to ride uh, to work and back. Back in my courier days, when I spent like, I don't know, 9, 10 hours in weather like this, yeah, yeah, you kind of need proper clothes. If you're not spent over three or four hours riding around in such temperatures and in such weather yes you're gonna need proper clothes expensive clothes but if you're just riding to work usually on a scooter i don't care how big the city is if you're riding to work it's usually about a 15 20 minute ride at most so uh you don't need any huge, uh, hugely expensive special gear, special winter gear to ride to work in uh, such weather. Heated grips, yes, are a must. I think heated grips are a must because you can get away with wearing lighter gloves and lighter gloves, especially in conditions like this, give you uh, a better feel of your brakes, a better feel of your throttle, give you a finer control over the vehicle. But if your hands freeze, then uh, that finesse is gone. So I do agree that heated grips are a must. So you keep your hands nice and warm and you have uh, precision in your fingers and in your hands. And otherwise, something that's a little bit windproof. And you're pretty much set. Something with a big windscreen also helps. But it's not necessary. I mean, I can close my visor and uh, I can be perfectly fine with that. Also, I can get a next, next scarf if I'm cold. Again, with the windscreen, I don't need the next scarf. But oh, come on. I really do need a wiper of some sort. Anyway, <laughs> once again, on road surfaces like this, easy on the corners, scan the surface, and uh, sometimes it would be best to just ride in the tracks of cars because they run over the little bit of snow that's on the road and melt it. So if you go in the middle where the cars don't touch the pavement, you might find a little bit of ice, a little bit of snow, but if you go on the tracks, and basically where the wheels of the cars touch, it should be perfectly fine. It is currently, and considering this is my fourth winter riding, I still haven't fallen. I've still this technique has worked for me for the past four years. 
So it has proven itself reliable. Yes, people even to this day ask, tell me that it's not, it's unsafe, it's crazy, it's wacky. Yeah, it is. I, I'll give you that. It's, it's not perfectly safe. Okay, I'm not saying everybody go out and ride in the window. But if you manage the risk, then yeah, it can be done. This is basically all about risk management. And come on, everything in life is dangerous at some point. Riding a motorcycle is dangerous even in perfect weather in the summer. It's still dangerous. Is this a little bit more dangerous? Yeah, probably. But again, ma risk management, risk assessment. Don't do stupid things. Don't, I don't know, try to drag me on a road surface like this. Just ride normally, ride gently. There's no reason why you shouldn't be perfectly fine. Pay attention to the traffic. I mean, properly pay attention to the traffic, not just uh, daydream. Properly pay attention to the traffic. And uh, that's pretty much it. Made it work. Absolutely no problem. There is a little bit of snow and ice here, but I'm pretty sure I can get through it. See, not a problem anyway thank you all so much for watching and uh, liking the videos and enjoying them and uh, again if you want to support the channel and these kinds of shenanigans do consider becoming a member if not just share the videos watch them enjoy them until next time guys take care out there and ride safe goodbye <laughs>